hello everyone welcome back to the channel and today we are going to learn how you can use gmapping for autonomous navigation for any of your custom bots so let's get into it So uh, this is a continuation of a series of lectures on ROS. So I'll be using my same robotics uh, workspace. And uh, in this, I have already explained to you how you can create your own custom robot that is your Atom bot and your Beta bot. If in case uh, you missed out on that, then I have put the link in the description below. Do check it out and do a simple git clone and then get started right of the box. I have given all the commands and prerequisites that you might need to follow up till now. Alright, so what I have done is I have divided this tutorial into three stages. So the first stage will be our mapping the whole environment. The second stage will actually be localization and the third stage will be our final autonomous navigation. So let's start with the first stage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start the Noetic. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have both Noetic and Foxy installed in my system. If you also want to learn how you can have ROS1 and ROS2 installed in your system, then do check out this other video that I made on it. Now we'll move to the next step that is creating our bot autonomous. For that, I'll be using Gmapping, right? Uh, for reference, if you go down to this page and then you'll be having this refer to the doc here for navigation. Now the two things that you're going to install extra is Noetic DWA local planner and also the Noetic G mapping. First I'll show you how the world will look like. So I have created one launch file that is ROS launch atom G mapping demo, right? Uh, let me just run it. As you can see, I have a house with me uh, in which we have the atom bot. I'll tell you in a bit like what exactly this house is and how you can add the same as well. Right. Let me just change the orientation. All right. So we have our gazebo simulation running with us along with we have our RVS also running. Let me just orient it properly. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we want to move our bot around. All right. Let me just zoom out a little and over here in the terminal in the second window what we're going to do is we're going to run the teleop twist keyboard command and we're going to give the command uh, underscore velocity uh, this particular topic that is slash atom slash command velocity now if i move the bottle a little you can see it's able to map i get this out of the way yeah you can see over here it's able to uh, map each and everything. Uh, let me just uh, decrease the speed a little so that the bot will be moving a little slow. Let's move forward. We'll shift a little, right? So this process can take a little time. Um, in the series of videos, I'll also show you how you can write a script to actually automate this particular task and uh, your bot can go into any of the un uncharted environment and it'll map the whole environment for you. And now you need to save this particular map, right? So for that, we need to run this program, uh, ROS run map saver dash map. So make sure this is the file name that you want to put in and you can CD into the folder where you actually want to save it. So if I want to just save it in my, you know, uh, robotics workspace, then I'll, I'll just have to press enter. Okay, now this is done. So if I go and look into my folder, you can see the, the two files have been added. That is map.pgm and map.yml. Uh, so for now, instead of using this, I'll show you the complete map that I've already done. So that's inside source maps AWS house. If you see the normal file of PGM, it'll have the complete scan of the environment, right? Okay. And in the YML file, if I open, right. So I'll be having all those things. Uh, that is the origin and occupied threshold, fresh threshold and the actual file name. So till now we have seen how you can uh, use gmapping to actually map an environment, right? Let's first understand the code. All right. So in the code, first thing that we are going to look into is the launch file because uh, that is where our entry point is, right? So for that, I'll go into uh, source atom and then launch over here. We have our gmapping demo. All right. So as you can see, uh, the first argument that I'm going to pass is uh, 3D sensors, uh, the default is R200. So a lot of the code that I have uh, taken and even the launch files are with reference to the turtle bot. Right? Uh, in ROS, if I, there's no point of writing each and everything on your own since uh, most of the code is already available. You just need to know how you can integrate it in your own system. Right? So uh, since I didn't want to change a lot of the launch files from the turtle bot, 
uh, that's why i have kept this uh, all the arguments the default arguments as of now only i have made changes according to my own atom bot okay so for this uh, we have a 3d sensor then the second argument that we're going to give is custom g mapping launch file so that is inside our navigation stack i'll show that to you in a minute right accord and also we'll be uh, including one file that is house to launch and then we are going to give uh, the same g mapping as uh, you know we're going to include this particular file as well so both these files uh, will be included and the third thing that we'll be opening is our rvis so by default um, i have also saved all the parameters in gmapping.rvis so it will work right out of the box in your system as well first we're going to see what exactly is there in house.launch okay so if i open this particular file you can see it is somewhat similar to what uh, our world.launch is that i have shown you in the previous video you can see uh, a lot of things are quite similar the only key difference uh, that i have made over here is in house dot launches first of all uh, in in the world file over over here i have added the aws uh, robo maker small house world right so this is a, a repository developed by the aws uh, i have taken that because already they had set up uh, almost all the elements that you might find in a small room that is there that's why i have uh, cloned and added this so by default if you uh, run it you will get this uh, out of the box right the next thing that i have changed is uh, instead of launching rvis from this particular file i have opened in the gmapping so that we can run our own custom rvis parameters all right the rest of the file is uh, pretty much the same uh, there are no difference uh, as such okay let's move on to the next file so the next file is uh, basically our custom gmapping launch file which you can find in the navigation stack so if you see in the folder structure right um, if you have alpha you have atom bot and then you have your aws so this is the aws uh, file that i was talking about right over here you can see the launch file for small house uh, very simple launch file uh, nothing much i have just uh, included this file and the next file that uh, we we are going to see is in navigation stack so you're going to see in the navigation stack inside launch file uh, inside includes you'll be having uh, in inside g mapping and then you have r200 g mapping launch right so this is the uh, default g mapping launch file that is present so i have taken this from the total bot itself like uh, each and everything few things uh, that i have changed is uh, you know first of all the base frame so earlier the base frame uh, was base underscore footprint that is default in total bot but in our case i have named the base as chassis right so this is something that uh, i have changed and uh, the same thing you can see right so this this is what uh, is actually happening in g mapping demo so you have just a basic uh, house dot launch and then a g mapping launch file uh, if you want to understand more about it then uh, let me know i'll make a separate video explaining how exactly like what all these parameters are used for as of now i have kept them default i have not changed uh, any parameters uh, inside it the only change that we have done is the base frame all right so uh, this this was pre pretty much it for the g mapping demo so till now what all things we have covered is scanning the environment and saving them as map now the next step that we'll move on to is localization we, we are going to use the amcl for uh, localization for that as well i have written a separate launch file that is localization.launch uh, this is the file that we're going to use let me just copy this and uh, if we head back to the terminal over here you'll see everything is set up all right so you see all this uh, red lines uh, um, around your bot right so these are because uh, these are the possible points at which your bot might be there so that's why it has plotted as you move around in your environment it will have better idea about the localization so for that what we are going to do is we are going to run the teleop command again just decrease the speed a little because uh, if you move around the bot too fast then it will not be able to localize properly and it will have some difficulty taking a turn or something like that so now if you see as it is moving forward it is able to localize better that's why the number of uh, red lines are decreasing as you move around right so now it is able to localize the bot very accurately but if i just uh, simply twist the bot then you see the number of uh, lines will increase a little 
but if, if you just simply move start move forward in any of the direction then automatically it will try to localize itself without having any difficulty as well. all right so this was it for localization let me just uh, stop the bot over here and turn off the simulation right now let's go ahead and look into the launch file like what exactly is happening inside it so in the launch file the first thing is uh, we have our own custom a amcl launch file that is again inside the navigation stack then we are including the same house dot launch file and also we have we are also including our map right so as you can see in the map file the first thing uh, the first argument that is custom is the base link name so in our case it's chassis the other argument is the map file so as i had already shown you in the map uh, the current map that i had already saved is in uh, aws house and map.yml right the next thing is again a custom uh, rvis parameters that i am opening over here you can see that rvis harvest slash amcl has all those parameters saved the launch uh, the house at launch file is exactly the same the only difference is a custom a amcl file so let's look into that in the custom amcl file you can see the default argument also is the same map file but uh, this is just to avoid any kind of error you can uh, give the value over here for your own uh, map dot yml file whatever wherever you save actually right the next thing that we're going to do inside this is we have our uh, map server node that is running okay the rest of the parameters are actually uh, same and i have taken everything from total bot again the change that i have done is for our base frame id so since our base frame is going to be chassis right so by default inside the total bot it's uh, base underscore footprint uh, that's why i have taken that parameter and the same i've given in the localization dot launch file as well uh, over here you can see right so this is the only thing that we need to do just for the localization part now uh, after the localization we want our bot to actually navigate autonomously right so for that uh, we have a separate launch file so let's head back to our uh, github repo okay now we have a navigation stack for that we have our navigation dot launch let me just copy and run this command so now you'll see automatically each and everything will be loaded automatically you don't have to do anything apart from just uh, setting it up all right so let me just put the gazebo simulation over here right now what you actually have to do is you can see the localization is already happening over here right now in order for your bot to move anyway you just have to give uh, 2d nav pole before that if you feel like the localization is not happening properly using this 2d pose estimate what you can give is initial orientation right so since it's correct as of now but still i'll just to show you you can just have the orientation and accordingly the new localization will take place okay in order for you to have 2d nav goal what you can do is simply you know give any uh, navigation direction and it will go over there and you see you we have an obstacle over here in the gazebo simulation also you can see it is trying to avoid that and uh, going around that okay so let me just uh, zoom out for you a little better okay now uh, let's go into a confined place uh, so that we can see it better right you see while turning uh, it's having a little bit difficulty in localizing it but as it moves forward and it finds more objects so it's able to recognize that and then localize itself properly and you can see it's able to avoid all these obstacles uh, that are there in its path right the next thing that we are going to try is actually adding some uh, dynamic obstacle because everything so far has been static so everything that has been mapped right um, till now you see over here we don't have any of these uh, object in this particular place so what i'll do is i'll go to the insert and i'll uh, try to include one cabinet over here right so you can see in, in in our gazebo simulation we have a cabinet but the map you're not able to see so what i'll do is i'll i'll try to navigate the bot over here to its original location right so you see over here right now for the global path planner it's showing that it should take this direct path but uh, over here now the lidar has also started detecting uh, an obstacle over here that means it'll have to avoid this as well so now you see in the local path planner it automatically detects this particular cabinet and it'll try to move around this particular cabinet on its own okay so once it uh, reaches its goal it will actually try to orient itself uh, in the correct orientation that we have already given to the bot 
So now let's understand the code behind the navigation stack and uh, how exactly things are happening. So we'll go into the launch file again and we'll open navigation.launch. The first thing that you observe over here is that we are using a custom AMCL launch file that again is stored inside our navigation stack. This is the same AMCL file which uh, we had used in localization. The next thing is uh, again the same house.launch file is being included. Next including the file that is you know the amc launch file and in that again we are giving our base link name uh, chassis and also the map file we are setting as uh, aws map.yml the next thing that we are going to include is uh, our move base dot launch dot xml now this file is again taken from turtlebot 3 the main things that uh, we need to give as an argument over here is uh, for example uh, base frame id in our case it will be chassis then we have autumn topic uh, which will be atom slash uh, autumn then we have autumn frame id same as autumn then velocity topic uh, which will be atom slash uh, cmd underscore velocity and we need to give one custom param file that is again inside our navigation stack called r200 cost map params so let's see what exactly this uh, move base.launch file consists of so as you can see uh, over here we have already mentioned these arguments uh, the default value has been provided the default values are for uh, total war 3 that's why we have provided our own custom values uh, over here uh, apart from that we don't have to change uh, anything uh, i have just done a little bit of remapping so that it's according to our own custom topics uh, that are there you can see uh, a lot of uh, param files are being included and uh, all of them are stored inside this folder uh, param inside the navigation stack now these parameters are again kept at default i have not changed anything inside here so whatever the values that are there in total bot the same values i've kept over here uh, let me know in the comments if you want uh, to have a detailed video on these parameter itself that uh, how you can tune them or you know change them for your own need final thing that is remaining in navigation launches again the rvis and uh, for that also we have a custom parameter rvis file that is navigation.rvis this is the complete launch file and with this uh, we have a complete uh, navigation stack ready in which our bot will be mo moving autonomously if you have any doubts or uh, you need any clarification on any of the topics that we have discussed in the video then feel free to either create an issue on my github page or you can leave down a comment so this was it for uh, a very short tutorial on G mapping, localization and uh, moving your bot autonomously. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short and fun tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below what other videos I should make. Thanks for watching.